guys, it's Jamie Ray from Jamie Ray Vintage. I got all dressed up today, as you can tell. That way I could show you how to take this pile of wood and turn it into an amazing farmhouse-inspired table. I found a table on Pinterest from Restoration Hardware. I didn't even look at the price, but I'm sure it's way more than I wanted to spend. But then I went to Home Depot, and I spent under $50 in lumber. By the time I'm all done, it may cost me $75, $80, bucks, and I will have a recreated table just like that one. The important thing to know about a lot of your hardware stores is they have a scratch and dent section. You'll see right here, it's got purple on this wood and that means that it was 70% off. It would have cost us another easily $30 or $40 had this part of the wood not came from the scratch and dent. Always check there first and see if you can get a deal for your projects. We always start from the bottom up. So this is our tabletop. These boards were originally 16 foot long, but that wouldn't fit in our trailer. So we had them cut them down at eight foot at the hardware store. They're a little off, so we'll have to straighten them out. And we've laid them across so that we can see how wide. Right now we're at a width of 32 inches, but we're gonna trim out the edge and that'll put us about 34 inches, which is perfect for a long, skinny farm table. So what we've done so far is we cut the edges so they were an even eight feet. They weren't quite perfect from the hardware store. And then we've used this big aluminum bar clamp to take all the boards and clamp them together. You want them as close as possible so you don't have giant gaps. You could also, if you had a planer, you could plane the sides and make them nice and flush, but not everybody has that. So if you've got a clamp, you just clamp it as tight as possible. The next step is we're gonna measure for our trestle. There's two boards that are gonna go across the bottom that will attach our base. So we're right at 32 inches. So we'll go ahead and measure our board and get it cut. All right, so right here on the edge, we're just gonna take these on a 45 to make them a little more decorative and a little more seamless as we uh, come to the edge of the table. So I'm just right on the very edge of the board. Okay guys, so Zeb cut this board at a 45 on the chop saw, and we're gonna go ahead and countersink where our screws are gonna go in. We've got uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We have 14 screws that we're gonna stick across the bottom. So we're gonna take our countersink and come straight up and we're gonna go all the way down to our stop on our countersink. So we measured 10 inches back from the edge and drew a line across so we'd have a nice straight line for our trestle. I'm gonna go ahead and use these two inch drywall screws and screw all the way across, securing this board to the boards below. We have this upside down so that way we get the maximum amount of pressure on our boards so that way they can straighten them out and you get a good look in the end. So we're ready to cut our support beam that goes across the middle that's going to go from trestle to trestle, the part that we screwed it earlier. It's 69 inches long and I'm going to go ahead and just do a straight cut at 69 inches. Okay, so we're putting our brace across the bottom and in between the trestle. We've got eight holes and we're going to go ahead and screw these two inch screws right through our counter sinks. All right, so we're gonna be attaching this beam over here to the bottom of our table. We really want it to be secure because this part over here is where we're gonna have our trestle legs and we don't want it to wobble over time or if it gets dragged, rip a leg off. We're gonna be using this 5 16 hanger bolt and we're gonna be drilling a quarter inch hole. The hole is gonna be smaller than the bolt because you wanna give it something to grip to and you've gotta get it in there nice and tight. So I'm just gonna use my drill and drill through here. So I've got my original Gorilla Glue here and I'm using this glue because it expands so it'll make a nice tight bond between my screw and my wood. I'm just gonna put a few drops. Be careful not to put a ton because it will expand and you don't want it to it volcano over the top. Ready? Mm -hmm. So I've got my vice grips and my bolt here and I'm just gonna screw this down in. You gotta give it a little pressure since our hole's a little bit smaller than our bolt. And just keep going till you get halfway through this bolt and you're just gonna have the second half open with a pointy end and that's what's gonna go into our brace that's going across. So I'm doing the same thing on the other side. I'm just screwing in this hanger bolt 
halfway down. All right guys, so I'm cutting a 10 inch portion on this two by four and this is gonna go from the end beam where the trestle's going to the edge of the table and we'll show you where that connects in a minute. I'm just using my chop saw. You could also use a hand saw or a circular saw if you don't have a chop saw. Okay guys, we've got our leg support here. It's 24 inches. This is gonna go in the middle of our trestle. I'm gonna go ahead and cut two of these. So the 10 inch piece that I cut, we put a 45 degree angle on the end and we countersunk four holes and we're putting in four screws. Okay, so we're gonna be drilling a hole about halfway through, probably about an inch down with my drill here. We're going to be putting the pointy end of our dowel screw in here when we're attaching our trestle. So I'm just gonna do that and put a dab of glue in there. And this is a quarter inch drill. That's good. Okay, so now we're going to screw on our post here. take another 24 inch 4x4 and do the exact same process on the other side. Okay, so we're getting ready to cut out the wood that's going to be our corbels, which will be our decorative part on our farm table. This is my most favorite part. We have a 1x10, which actually works out to be about 9 inches wide. And then we're cutting 8, inch, um, eight inches in depth here. And I'm just going to take my circular saw and run it along this green line and cut it out. No pressure, Zeb says if I mess up, we have to buy a whole new board. So let's see what I can do. Okay, so we're getting ready to cut out our corbels and we measured an inch from each corner here and then we took our 45 and we marked right in the middle there. And I'm gonna as neatly as possible arc it across this way and around that way and then we'll cut one and we'll use that as our stencil to do all the rest of them. We're gonna have 12 total. I like how that turned out. We're gonna get this cut and do 12 more just like it. Now that we've got 12 of these corbels all cut out, we're gonna go ahead and sand them. We've got this clamp set up here with our belt sander and we're gonna go ahead and go along the edge and along this edge to get rid of any imperfections, any kind of grooves in there, and just to make it look the way that it's supposed to. Okay, so once you've got that all sanded, this is what it looks like. We've got one down, 11 more to go. Okay, so I wanted to show you how we attach the corbels, and I'm gonna show you how to cut it in a minute, but I thought it'd be easier if you saw the finished product. So we've got one by two along here and along here. We glued it and stapled it, and then when we put the corbel on, we countersunk the hole and screwed through the corbel and the one by two, and we did that on three sides. So I'm gonna show you how I cut the one by two and how to attach the corbel, but I think it makes more sense if you see what the finished product looks like. Okay, so we're gonna take our one by two, and we're gonna be cutting the base for our corbels. You're gonna have 12 that are nine and a half, and then 12 that are 10 and a quarter, and they're just gonna fit underneath these, one going this way and then one coming up the other way. So you just want to make sure that it's the correct length. I always do a dry fit after I make my cuts. Okay, so we're going to take our one by two and we're going to put our bead of glue all the way across the bottom. This is our nine and a half inch piece and we're going to center it in the middle of this four by four here. You're going to want to have a half inch on each side and you will staple it into place. The next piece is your 10 and a quarter piece and you're gonna put, do the same thing. Put your glue down the middle and put it right up here. So once you glue that in place, you're gonna go ahead and take your nail gun and you're gonna staple it secure. Okay, so now we're gonna glue our corbel on. Same thing, you wanna make sure you apply the glue liberally because this is what's holding it on. So usually about two passes and then just take your finger and go over it like that. I didn't do that the last time and Zeb instructed me between them. That's the way it's done. So make sure it gets done. I fixed it, but it was off the camera. And now we're ready to screw it in. So we're ready to 
add our bottom truss here to our table. We've got four holes that we need to drill. I already did three drill bit on here and I'm gonna be drilling down two inches. And my screws are two and a half inches. I marked it at two inches so I don't go any further than that because we've got a three and a half inch fan here that we've gotta go through. Now I'm gonna take my two and a half inch screws and I'm gonna put four of them on each side. go on our base we've already got the one big bar that goes across so that will come out to the end and we're just cutting the other two that are going each way on each side and it's 14 and 3 8 and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one and three more okay guys so I don't like using the bandsaw because it kind of scares me I'm worried I'm gonna lose fingers so I'm gonna have Zeb do it for me and we're going to be cutting the curved edge on our feet each foot has one curved edge, so he's going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So I lost some footage, and I wanted to show you this piece. The table's actually done, we've got it in the house, but I flipped it on its lid. And this is just an eighth inch thick by three quarters metal strap that I've got. And I drilled five holes in it, and these feet are what support the table from falling over sideways. The corbel holds it on on top, it keeps it pretty sturdy, but this will ensure that my table never does the split, so that'll keep that nice and strong. Just wanted to show you that. I've got a 3 8 dowel here. I'm gonna use this to plug all the holes that we drilled into the corbel to countersink those, and I'm just using the bandsaw. Cut it about a quarter inch. And have someone with good hands catch it on the other end. Okay, so we're gonna take our glue, and I already put some on here, and put it on the end of your dowel, and you're just gonna poke that down into your hole, and then hammer it into place. Jack, do you wanna help? Hammer it in. All right, good job. Once you get that in place, move your head so they can see. Once you get that in place, then you're gonna let that dry, and then you'll sand it smooth. You're gonna do that in every hole that you've got from your screws. Okay, so we're going for a really old world look. Why am I standing on the table? One, to see if it's sturdy. Two, so that way I can add some age to it. And you want it to be kind of unique and sporadic. So Jack has brought me these rocks here and I'm just gonna stomp on them and scrape them across all over the table and it'll make some natural wear and age to it. After I do that, then I'll probably take my pliers and poke some holes in it and an ice pick and do a few other things until I get the age that I want. Hit it. Get it, Jack, get it. Good job. Okay, hey, you want the little hammer? Hit the wood. The wood. Okay guys, we have aged our table and we went ahead and we sanded it and we got everything smooth. I tried to make as many of the edges round as possible. Old, we want to mimic an old world look and old tables don't have sharp edges. They've worn over time. So that's really important to keep in mind. Make sure you sand every flat surface so that way you don't get any splinters over time. They'll kind of pop up. So make sure they're all sanded smooth. I used my rotary with my 150 just to kind of be the final sand for it. And I am going to paint. So I've been looking on Pinterest and there's this table that I just dearly love and it has kind of a lighter top with a layered paint finish and mostly light stain and the bottom is a really dark gray with a heavy, heavy distress. I think there's more paint missing than is there. So I'm gonna try to replicate that and I'm gonna be using fairy chalk mothering gunmetal. So I've got my spray gun and I'm gonna go ahead and just spray the base and once that's dry, then I'll go ahead and do some brush effect up here I'll show you and then we'll distress it and then we'll put the stain over the top of the paint when we're all done. All right guys, we're getting to the, almost to the end of our painting part. 
and I'm gonna be brushing with my round zipper brush in gunmetal and fresh cream. I'm gonna take gunmetal and go around most of the edges and then I'm gonna sporadically brush on the cream and the gunmetal on the top just in a few different spots and later I'm gonna be sanding it, kind of smoothing it in and then staining over the top of that. So I'm just gonna kind of show you how that goes. As always, if you wanna buy Fairy Chalk Mother paint, go to jamierayvintage.com and I've got all my colors on there. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and distress and we're going to smooth out some of these edges from our brush strokes. In the end result, you want it to look like clumps of leftover paint, not something that you just brushed on and you want it to be super, super chippy. I'm starting off with 80 grit on my rotary sander. Once I get it the look I want, then I'll switch over to my 150 and smooth everything out. You want a nice smooth finish and 80 will leave it just a little bit too rough. So, go ahead and get started. Alright guys, we're ready to get our stain on. We're going to put our stain over the top of the areas that are painted. And I've already got started here. We're using um, Min Wax in Weathered Oak 270. And I'm just putting it on with a lint-free rag and going right over the top of the areas that I painted. It's not a whole lot different than what the natural wood is, but it adds some depth. All right, Jamie had to run the girls off to dance, so you're stuck with me finishing this. I'm just gonna time lapse it for you real quick and we'll show you what that looks like as it goes here. So I wanted to add an extra level of depth and age to this, so I took our snowflake, I watered it down two parts water to one part snowflake, and I'm just wiping it on with a lint-free rag. You can kind of see the difference between here and here, how that just adds a little bit of gray and white to it and makes it look aged. I'm gonna do that to the whole piece and then we'll be ready to seal. All right guys, we're ready for our last step. We're gonna be using Minwax Polyacrylic and Satin. We're gonna do about five coats, waiting two hours in between. If you wanna know more about spraying polyurethane or polyacrylic, check the link below. It's got all the information that you need. We'll show you the finished project. All right guys, our farm table is all finished. I hope it inspired you to take on a building project of your own. If you have any questions, be sure to comment below. And as always, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.